Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to If Data Could Talk. My name is Andy Cockgreave. I'm technical evangelist at Tableau. And once again, for the third time, I have a co-host, Keisha. Keisha Rose, how are you? Tell us why you're here and what we're going to do today. I'm doing great. Thanks, Andy. Uh, I'm here because we hosted IronViz a couple of weeks ago, right? And now we get to get to look a bit more, though, at the actual build action, which for me, this is the first time I've ever actually been able to get this close of a look at the build, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. These, these episodes have been amazing. And this is the final one of the three. In fact, this mm-hmm. is the one where we get to interview Christian Felix. He's the person who won iron viz 2020 christian welcome to the show has it all settled in as that you're now the iron viz champion a, a, a little bit the the trophy is behind my shoulder here which makes it settle in a little bit more i suppose but yes it's all been a bit of a whirlwind uh, a lot of excitement um a lot of people reaching out and congratulating me so it's been a lot a lot of fun great well look congratulations all your hard work paid off and this is it. We're really, Keisha and I are just desperate to press play on this video and get to hear the the joys and the stress and all the reasons you made the choices you made. So uh, are we all ready? Mm-hmm. I'm seeing Let's nods. Do Let's do it. Let's press play. Here we go. 20 minutes, Christian, to share everything you know. Um, so I guess, <laughs> you, you know, what, what was it like, Ironviz, for you? How, how was the experience? Was it stressful? Uh, you could you could say that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the timeline was incredibly condensed, I believe, even compared to prior years. Mm-hmm. So we get the data the day after the announcements are result uh, are announced for the qualifiers. And from there, really, we have a couple of weeks um, to put together a visualization to, to be filmed. So in that period, you're doing analysis, you're doing research and you're putting a viz and you're getting it ready to film. So, yes, stressful but uh, a, lot, a lot of excitement as well. Yeah. And and so tell me about the data prep. Well, obviously, you're doing a lot of formatting setting up here. We can talk about that a little bit. But uh, how did you approach the data set? I spent a lot of time in prep on the front end. You know, I, I hadn't really used the, the tool that much. Thankfully, it was uh, relatively intuitive, having been a Tableau user for a long time and easy to use. So I spent a lot of time in prep just analyzing the data and cleaning it to get it ready to visualize in Tableau. And because um, I think we gave you a bunch of data sets, right? Did you did you try and capture the whole story? Well, obviously we, we know the story you, you you honed in on. How did you go from everything yeah. down to the, the story you ended up on? Uh, initially, you know, I'm, I'm using prep in conjunction with Tableau to visualize, explore the data. Ultimately, the, the final prep flow I ended up with was trimmed down considerably. So a lot of variables were, were removed that I ended up not using for the final story um, just to maximize performance in Tableau. Um, in terms of settling on the story, really it's, it's, what I like to do is just create a bunch of scatter plots initially in Tableau. If I'm trying to understand pollution levels, I've joined the data and I'm looking at all the different variables. And what I settled on was that nominal GDP uh, yeah. measure to try and, um, Put that forward as my primary uh my primary story oh, i love that i that's really interesting i, I don't i think I, I i do scatter plots all the time with the new data sets like just take yeah. all the measures and just do one against the other as quickly as you can um i don't think i'll have a consciously stopped and realize that's something i do is that is that something you do a lot it's something i've always done you know i started using tableau as a as an analytics student at texas a&m and so we were doing a lot of statistics and trying to explore data for statistical models. And yeah. ultimately, always, I, w- I was doing scatter plots to try and understand correlations and relationships. So that's something I've always really used Tableau with, particularly when you have a wide data set with lots of variables, lots of numbers, just create a bunch of scatter plots, try and understand relationships as best as possible. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Keisha, what, what do you do when you I, get a new data just- set? I was more curious to see how that applies to business. Cause you mentioned you did it in school, but would you also do it at work as well? Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on the data set. You know, in this case, we had a ton of variables and I was just trying to understand um, with all those variables, what was most related to those PM 2.5 pollution levels. Uh, In in a business perspective, um, perhaps you don't have as many variables and you can do some other type of analysis. But um, yeah, scatter plots work well. I love scatter plots and they work well for understanding those relationships. 
Yeah. Uh, I get, I, for those that may not have seen the Iron Viz final, the links are below. Do go and watch the final. But um, yeah, we haven't actually said it. This is data about uh, air quality and air pollution. And um, each of the contestants had this to work with. Uh, so you made a lot of progress already here, uh, Christian. <laughs> uh, and there's so many choices we've just glossed over, right? So yeah. uh ariel black um i think what when all the judges when i saw you choose ariel black it was like wow that's a statement font um you, you know what's important about font choice in iron viz and beyond yeah you know i think hesham used that font last year i was looking for something that was bold that stood out that sort of popped out from uh the dashboard and ariel black was something that probably rendered well for the most part on whatever mm -hmm device or computer the uh the consumer was viewing it on so i decided to go with ariel black all right oh we lost oh, the screen for a moment got an Come ariel on. black screen there for a second we're back, <laughs> we're back we're online and, and <laughs> then, I like, back. hang on so you know what we might just pause this so oh maybe not at that stage let's just play. <laughs> Let's just press play. So yeah, what I love about Ironviz is, you know, you're happily creating a bar chart and it's like, this is Ironviz yeah. and he's got a bar chart with three things in it. It's like, what? And then some dots appear on a map. And then and then with one click, this has happened. There you go. Let's pause here. So, um, it, you know, I, I love these moments in Ironviz. What, what's going on here? How on earth did you build this? Yeah, I think, so I felt this. I think the other contestants did as well, but there's, there's this tension that comes along with participating in Iron Viz where you want to do something innovative, new, um, that amazes the audience. But at the same time, you want to do something that's simple enough for people to understand in, in 20 minutes. And so, I, yes, I had the bar chart, like you mentioned, Andy. I had the scatter plot, but I also wanted to produce what you're looking at here, which is these curved lines on the map. And this is something I first saw at Tableau Conference last year. Uh, Alex Varlamov put together a Pantheon Viz that had these mm amazing curves on a map that trace horizontally through a, a Sankey chart to maps going left to right. And I came back from the conference and I tried to implement it. I stumbled through it. I got really close. Eventually I got bogged down and got pulled off on other things. Um, just a couple of months ago, there was a blog post on the FlirtLashTwins.com where Wendy uh, Sheha in conjunction with Ken um, produced step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this technique. And I saw it and it was incredibly easy to understand, an incredible resource. And so I was like, this, this can be a good use case for this particular data. And so, yeah, what it is, is, is sigmoid curves. I set the, uh, the access to the longitude at the top where I want the, uh, the, the curved lines to connect to the bars I'm gonna place up there later in the viz. And the, the endpoints are just the, the lat long coordinates of the individual cities. Nice. So uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Yeah, that, that's good stuff. I think, um, talk to me more about that tension between the iron viz style and winning viz and the business what you do in your day job and how you leak how, the, how they lean into each other or perhaps don't um yeah yeah so i i work for for roche out of tucson arizona uh, i work with tableau every day business dashboards um and this is perhaps a little bit different than what i would put together at work but uh at the same time your the objective is to to produce um an information resource that people can easily understand in a short amount of time as possible. And yeah. I feel like even though you have perhaps more advanced charts in this viz, I believe that objective still is intact because the, the curved lines connect to the bar chart, which shows the aggregate data. Uh, the bar charts flow down to the lines, which shows the disaggregated data at the city level. And there's a continuity there that I, I believe helps tell the story and is more than just uh, aesthetics. Yeah, I think it, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because essentially you've got, the, you know, this will ultimately build into a bar chart and a dot plot on a map. That's literally, it. you just happen to have yeah. added the lines, right? So the technique right. to get to the end point is, you know, next level stuff, but it's still a bar chart. It's still serving a very simple story. Exactly. Uh, I don't know, Keisha, what do you, what do you think? Um, what, do you lean into the I'm this style or business approach with your work? From my work, it's not nearly as fancy as, <laughs> as this map is. Mostly just bar charts, but you know, they get the job done. <laughs> yeah, they do. I don't even know how to build this stuff, but the resource is there if I wanted to go and find the blog post. Um, now, you've used uh, Mapbox as your background here as well. You can bring, obviously, Mapbox maps into Tableau. Why did you choose to do that? Yeah, I wanted to create uh, you know a, a dark background that would allow the, the colors and the observations on the map to really to, to pop out. 
Um, I was trying to go for sort of a, a earth science-y color palette, if you will. So have sort of a dark blue as the background and, and the yellow, white, and the green as, as the colors. So, yeah. um, you know, Mapbox allows for a lot of flexibility and customization in maps, and it's great that it integrates so easily in Tableau. I also noticed um, you use the find box, the find box. Uh, yeah, so I love to the find, find your box. Yeah, I, I, right. Okay, cool. Because I think over time I've started doing that. Oh, actually, we're going to pause here. I'm going to pause here. How many times, this is something I've asked every contestant. Yeah. How many times have you done a dual axis and not then done synchronized axis as your first click? Ah. Uh. I don't know. That's a good question. But I, usually, usually it becomes easily apparent that I haven't synchronized the axis <laughs> and I, I'm allowed to correct myself before it actually has disastrous results. But, but, uh, all right. But yeah. generally, the, the point for the dual axis is almost always synchronized. Is that, yes. Is that, yes. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's my hunch. <laughs> yes. That's my hunch. And then my <laughs> survey of three people has proven me right. Yeah. yeah. Small sample size. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, you know, never stopped me making conclusions. Before. <laughs> uh, anyway, so sorry, the find box, right? So the find box there up in the top left, um, has that become your best friend? Yeah, and that's something I use all the time at work. I mean, we have a ton of, of data and using the find box, type in a, a number that the search is robust and allows me to find the field dimensions measures I'm looking for. So, and in IronViz, you saw how I aggregated all those measures once, just type in the letter <laughs> Z. And because I named them before in Tableau Prep, it went directly to those ones that I needed to, to do the aggregation on. It was very easy. Oh, yeah, so it's also yeah. a trick then too. Yes. I mean, there's all sorts of things you try and cut out to save time in this process. And that was one of them. That, that's a good one. I like that. Um, what were, the, were there any other sort of speed run tricks you, you learned? The, maybe specific to Invis, then could be applied elsewhere. They had the Lindsay Poulter one was yep. amazing, very much appreciative. Uh, and, and all the formatting on the front end. You know, I think Invis is kind of the anticlimactic because there's all this build up on the front end. And then you watch the contestants do all that formatting, the workbook and all that stuff. But that's incredibly important for a, a productive and efficient build later on down the road. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you wish there was some formatting things you could do? on mass as well uh, there's, there's obviously a lot of formatting clicks still to go in this yeah. one. yeah yeah perhaps i mean so yeah some of these i mean formatting the scatter plot took a lot of time and mm. i remember in my when i was testing it i was bumping right up against the uh the 20 minute yeah. timeline and i was there was a little bit of concern there but yeah if, if there was a way to to expedite that to make it more efficient obviously in one fell swoop on the front end that would be that would be amazing. Now, how many times did you go through this run? You mentioned cutting it down to the 20 minutes. How many times did you practice? <laughs> so another story, I had a family vacation, September 11th through 14th. I was gone off <sighs> the grid for like four days. And so my prep was condensed to like the day before and the day of, and I just did it as many times as possible. I don't know how many times but before this was actually filmed. I was doing it the day of. And so, um, I don't know, maybe 10, a dozen, trying to just make sure it's like second nature to be able to do this. Um, so yeah, it was, it was uh, tense, definitely. Well, it paid off, huh? Um, so yeah, and it, you're using the page shelf. You're actually the only contestant to use the page shelf this year. What was, um, what, what, what do you like about bringing the page shelf in? Yeah. What I really wanted to use it for was to allow the viewer to see if GDP increases by this much, um, these cities that are currently living in unhealthy air could move to moderately healthy and maybe even to, uh, to healthy air. And so I wanted to, to use the page shelf to um, animate basically the entire viz. So the map, the bar chart, and the scatter plot would all tell that story in unison. Right. I see. <laughs> this, oh, this, just this, we, we thought you were all taking a break and <laughs> going to check your email here. It's like, what's, what's he doing? I, like, uh, I, I, I think no. I audibly said something to myself during the during this process. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but this was definitely a, a moment of panic that thankfully I uh, recovered from relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, what, what, what Christian's doing there, he went to Google to download a background image. And in fact, there's a few more resources you uh, had on the Google Drive ready to go. Um, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I also know I noticed all contestants uh, deleted the phone layout uh, as soon as they went to the <laughs> dashboard this year. But what's um, what, what? Why did you do that? 
Oh, golly. I, I, uh, I would have loved to have time to produce a mobile layout as well, but just with the timeline of the contest and the timeline of the actual competition, producing a mobile uh, layout and viz in conjunction with the desktop one just wasn't possible. I, I wasn't able to fit it in. So I just immediately deleted it such that when somebody went to, to view it, it would stay in that, that fixed dimensional yeah. view that I set initially. Uh, okay, right. That, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think I think the constraints of a twenty minute build, we will forgive you for not building a mobile <laughs> version as well. <laughs> uh, there was some joking back and forth during, uh, amongst the three contestants that I believe Alex had actually built a mobile layout as well, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm I'm done for if that's the case." Because yeah, <laughs> was that trash pr- trash talking? Because did he did he do that? I don't believe he did. Maybe he, maybe I'm wrong. No, there was some some friendly competitive banter amongst us that uh, that was part of, but no, he did not. All right, jolly good. Now, I noticed that unlike the other contestants, you were doing a lot of manual positioning. I feel like a lot of folks typed in their coordinates exactly, but you're kind of just moving it with your mouse, freehanding it. Yeah, and perhaps that's a lesson learned. You know, I I, I would love to watch this for the other contestants to see um, how they did it. You're, you're right, Keisha. That. I mean, there was, I had that, that canvas that I imported that, that was the image. And I had the sort of sidebar on the right that gave me a rough idea of the area I wanted to put the scatter plot. Um, but I didn't have fixed coordinates in my build notes or in the calculations to tell me where to locate the, the, the worksheets on the dashboard. I, I loved watching yours. Cause I remember I, I was watching the other two and I was like, oh, I love this precision, you know, pixel perfect. Uh, every every tile is perfect and you were just like yeah just throw it on make it good enough and, and i'm like it works it certainly works as a way to do it right uh, yeah and i, I believe that, that probably speaks to the the whole rushed and condensed process of, of this i was just glad to get it on there and finish in 20 minutes yeah Yeah, you, you're right, Keisha. I mean, this is this is painful to watch. It's like drag a little bit this way, a little bit this way. Oh, there it is. Maybe. I, I, nope. <laughs> I, I think, though, to be honest, Christian, you know, I think you're speaking to every man here. You know, the, the, this is certainly how I build dashboards, right? And uh, uh, so I suppose you've probably got a lot of people empathizing with you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was happy that the other contestants, at least watching the competition again looked like they had the same approach where they were using images as canvases. I mean, I, I didn't like having to uh, embed all that text in my dashboard canvas, but again, you're up against the 20 minutes mm. and uh, you're just looking to, to save time. So that yeah. text need, needed to be in there for me to tell the story. So yeah, that's what I ended up deciding on. And something I noticed all three contestants were consistent with is you're obviously building something so you can tell the story to the judges you know, and, that, and that's how you win Iron Viz. Uh, but you're, you're also very conscious about, and I think you particularly, are con- well, now all of you are conscious of building something that then works for a general audience. Um, was that, you know, they might come and see this on Tableau Public. Was that, is it difficult sometimes to, to satisfy both needs? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, maybe there's a balancing act there. I believe if, if you tell the story to the general audience and, and they're compelled by it, generally that works well for the, the judges too. And um, when I was building this viz, I was thinking of my dad who had asthma as a kid, immigrated from Puerto Rico um, into to Brooklyn, New York, dirty air, moved to LA in the 60s, uh, dirty air there. And so it just made me think of how many other people, whether on Tableau Public or elsewhere, would relate to this and be able to, to click through their own location and interact with it and see the air pollution and, and then give them some sort of hope that perhaps as nominal GDP, uh, as uh, wealth increases in their locale, that air pollution would, or that air pollution would, uh, would improve and the, their health would improve as well. Yeah, great. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've got, um, so, so this is a sources dashboard. I think, you know, this is great. Always give people a chance to know where the data came from. Just excellent yeah. practice for everybody. And you chose navigation buttons, which is, uh, you know, one of many paths you can go through. Um, do you, yeah. I mean, the, the, if people haven't seen these features before, do you just want to explain uh, what's going on here? 
Yep, just trying to make it very easy to navigate uh, between the two dashboards, the main one and the sources. Um, trying to do the formatting as quickly as possible to, to not waste too much time. But yeah, I think that sources dashboard is incredibly important, especially when you're dealing with uh, complex data like this data set, just to make sure people know what they're looking at. Yeah. And then here I'm just setting up the, uh, the parameter action to allow people to click in the map to drive the scatter plot as I think we'll see here. Yep, there we go. Yep. And, and also within the scatter plot to drive the update on, on the map. So adding a little bit of interactivity that perhaps is not obvious at first to the, to the viz. Parameter and set actions have revolutionized what you can build in terms of an interactive yes. experience in this product, I think. Yes, absolutely. And I just had a single one in this dashboard. Um, I believe the other contestants ha had a lot more, but uh, they absolutely have just added a tr tremendous amount of interactivity to the, to yeah. the tool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I Alex famously spent three or four minutes setting gears up and then pressing cancel on his. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that oh, was, man. I was, I was worried for him. I was hope he was going to make it. <laughs> yeah. He got that. He got yeah. there in the end. Added um, some suspense, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just right. like we all, didn't have enough spend suspense already. But <laughs> all pure gamesmanship from Mr. Jones, I'm sure. Uh, probably. I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, I believe somebody's somebody's Tableau did crash once in an Invis many years ago. I think they crashed Tableau after a few minutes. And oh, goodness. That obviously wasn't uh, a particularly pleasing moment. Oh, <laughs> my them, goodness. They, they recovered. I can't remember who that was. My Horrible. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure somebody can tell us in the comments. <laughs> yeah. And here I'm just, you know, trying to make the, the last few formatting. I want to have all the, the tooltips perfect, remove any extraneous information and make sure when somebody hovers over the viz that they're giving, they're given information that adds some context to what they're looking yep. at. I love me a good tooltip. Uh, you can't yep. beat that. Yeah. So yeah, we we're coming up to the. Oh, actually, I have a question here, Christian. Oh, yes. oh, it's gone past. Did Did you know the slider at the top does the tabs for all the every line in the tooltip box at the same time? I'm sorry, say that again, Andy. There's a little slider at the top of the tooltip box which sets the yeah. tab position for every line. And I, because I noticed you were doing your tab lines individually. Uh -huh. uh, well, oh. I, I, no, I'll have to explore that. I, I was right. not aware of that. There you go. I could have, I could have shaved you. five seconds <laughs> yes. off your time there. I could have used that. <laughs> uh, uh, I just, yeah, I tried to keep it simple. So I just have, I just had the three worksheets, really, the scatter plot, the bar chart, mm. and, and the map. And um, yeah, but the five well, I seconds. Think, I think, nice. yeah, you, you've said, you know, Hisham, who uh, was one of the co-winners last year, you know, you were inspired by him and, and again, his viz only had maybe three sheets. And I sometimes think it's a misconception that INVIS is about throwing everything on a dashboard and making it all super advanced chart types. Whereas, yeah. you know, as you've established here, it's not. Uh, and I think we consistently see that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you re uh, you're really getting out of time. You've got about 30 seconds left here. Uh, and you're like, there's one thing left to do. And I forgot to add the legend <laughs> until oh, the God. last 30 seconds. And, oh, and, 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 uh, yeah. Yeah. And it was a yeah. size legend, right? This is a, this is yeah, a that's right. Legend. And you literally got this in. And I mean, it's like, right, time stops now, right? That, that was yes. literally it. Yeah, <laughs> that was so stressful. Yeah, and so and, and there you go. So that that was uh, that was time up. So uh, yeah, oh, how was it watching it, re rewatching it, Christian? Uh, it was. I remember just watching me build the dashboard and seeing how big my eyes were, and seeing them like move back and forth, tracking uh, from my build notes to my dashboard, and just yeah. how intense and and stressed out. I looked so you could tell just watching it that there was a, a, a tremendous amount of energy going into to that build. And um, oh, what was I going to ask? So yeah, how, um, I I've got a question. I'm, yeah, I'm go curious. ahead because mine's gone. Yeah, <laughs> I'm curious how you worked with your Sue visitor. Yeah, she was great. I mean, I so that day I came back from vacation, I had. Sometimes when you step away from Tableau or your computer, you get out, you sort of disconnect and you get all these great ideas. They pop into your head 
And then I came back and I was like, I'm going to implement it. And so I spent all that day building it and ended up being way too complex. I ran it by Sasha and said, you know what? I'm having a hard time even explaining this to you. If I can't explain it to you easily enough, there's no way I'm going to be able to, to do it um, on the day of the competition. And so mm-hmm. she helped me out uh, sort of to simplify this, to, to, um, to get it down to a point that the story was intact, but I was keeping the main thing, the main thing, and I was removing anything that was perhaps extraneous and wasn't needed. So she was just a great sounding board um, for ideas and definitely a ton of encouragement during those uh, stressful or moments of tension that you feel throughout the process. Yeah, yeah. How do you, th- how do you think it would have felt if you'd have been doing a live version, which obviously we all wish we'd have experienced this year. Uh, maybe you don't. Uh, you know, what do you think yeah. that would have been like? Yeah, I, I think probably we had it easy. I mean, the live one adds a different dimension to it that I think would be would be very challenging because not only are you live in front of 20,000 people, but you have all of the commentary going on that you're you're trying mm-hmm. to drown out and just focus on the build. And so, yeah, that's it would have been tough. It yeah. would have been tough. Yeah. All right. I, 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 Keisha, are there any more questions for Christian? No, I'm good. No. Uh, well, I, I've got one more Christian. You know, Christian, um, just to summarize the experience and you know, for people who might be thinking, oh, should I, should I enter Iron Viz again? Should I get involved in Makeover Monday and all these other projects where, you know, dipping your yeah. foot into sort of the community? But, you know, so can you give us some reflections and advice? Yeah, absolutely. This was uh, my first time ever entering into Iron Viz. I've mm. been the Tableau community for about a, you know, I've used Tableau for a while, didn't step foot really into the Tableau public community until about a couple of years ago. And uh, you sort of, come to see Iron Viz as a, something that you need to do uh, as a sort of a rite of passage and something that really challenges you. So I wanted to, to do that. And I had a lot of people uh, encouraging me to do it this year. Uh, Sarah Bartlett did a presentation at our user group and she recounted her experience where she didn't put together uh, her Viz to like the last weekend. And I'd heard other people like Chris Love in the community saying uh, they didn't put together their qualifier Viz till the last weekend too. So that was good because I was I was swamped. I didn't I was busy with work and didn't have a lot of time to mm. to put it together. So um, I put my qualifier viz together in about four four days and uh, was totally not expecting to make the top three. Um, was shocked when I learned that I did and uh, just blown away really. Yeah. And uh, and then from there you're you're sort of just it's icing on the cake that you get to compete in the global competition. And so you're trying to enjoy the process, trying not to get stressed out, trying to have fun with it and trying to just do the best you can. And, uh, and yeah, it was a whirlwind. It was a ton of work, but something that obviously is something that I would recommend to to anybody who's thinking about it. Totally, completely worth it. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Well, um, what can I say? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously holy support that, advice to just have a go right it, you know i'm yeah. is an opportunity to get into the community and develop your own skills and first timers can win the global competition you know that's amazing stuff uh, yeah. amazing yeah. wow gosh keisha what's it been like these three episodes have been really good fun i've really enjoyed them how's mm-hmm. it been for you Absolutely. This is a great chance to dive in, get a little bit more detail, see, peek behind the scenes a little bit. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, everybody, uh, if you want to get some more of this, uh, there are links below. Go and subscribe to Viz of the Day. You can get a visualization like this in your inbox every day, sent from the Tableau Public team. We have links to Christian, Alex, and Simon. You can go follow them on Tableau Public to see more of the incredible work they're going to be doing, I'm sure. Uh, well, maybe not this week. Maybe they're having a month off, but I'm sure they'll be back uh, <laughs> back on the saddle again very soon. Yep. Um, go check out the Viz Gallery. You know, just, just dig into the Tableau Public site. You are going to learn a huge amount. And hopefully, everybody watching will see you entering IronViz this time next year because uh, we yes. love seeing what the community can do. Yeah. So with thank that, you. yeah, Christian, thank you very much. Keisha, what a pleasure to have you on If Data Could Talk. Hopefully we can do this again soon. 
wherever you are in the world. We hope you have a fantastic day, morning, evening, rest of the day, and we will see you all again on If Dyke Talk. Goodbye. Take care. See ya.